Let me show you how to convert Adobe InDesign magazine layouts into stunning animated flipbook content. Follow along in this tutorial and learn how to export a PDF from InDesign and upload it to the flipbook platform Flowpaper. Learn how to add text and shape animations, create a photo gallery, and set up a button interaction to launch a video within the flipbook. So let's jump right in and start creating. All right, on my screen, I have a layout for a fictional travel magazine called Voyager. This is available in the lesson file, so go ahead and open it and let's take a closer look. Here, I have a cover page, pages two and three, and then four and five. Now, what we wanna do here is export this as a PDF and then upload it to the Flowpaper platform so we can add some animation to this. So let's make our way up to File and then choose Export. Now, by default, the Save As name will be the same as the document file. I have this set up as Travel underscore Magazine, which is just fine. In the Format dropdown, choose Adobe PDF Print PDF Interactive will work as well, and then just click Save. In the Export window, ensure that you have High Quality selected, and then choose All Pages and export them as Single Pages. The Flowpaper platform will recognize the single pages and automatically convert them to spreads. I always like choosing Optimize for Fast Web View, and if you have hyperlinks in your document, it's always a good idea to have this selected, the hyperlinks option, just so those also carry over to Flowpaper. Once you have those settings in place, go ahead and click Export. Let's jump over to Flowpaper next so we can upload the PDF, add animation, a photo gallery, and video. I'm on flowpaper.com now, and this is where we can convert our InDesign layout into a stunning animated flipbook. The first thing we want to do is click this Get Started button. So go ahead and click that. This will take you to the Plans area. Click Try for free. Now there are two ways of running the Flowpaper app. The first is right in your Chrome or Edge browser, or you can install the desktop publisher right to your computer. For this tutorial, let's run it in the Chrome browser. So I'm going to select that. And then once again, try for free. Now this will take you to the area where you can drop the PDF right into the area to upload it to Flowpaper. So let's do that. Now I'm gonna drag in the PDF that we exported from InDesign and I'm going to place it right in that area. The first thing you'll have to do is choose a template. The first one is Zine. This is a straightforward flipbook. The second one here is called Elements, and this allows you to add animations to text and object shapes. I'm gonna choose that one. Once you choose that one, you'll be presented with a sub-template. And in this case, I do want flipbook, so I'm gonna choose that as well. Now just know with a free plan, you're limited to 10 pages per document per publication. You'll also want to ensure that you have this selected as yes, enable shape animations. For this tutorial, we're gonna to have to have that on. Once you have those settings, click continue. The PDF will be uploaded to the Flowpaper platform, and then we can view it in just a few moments. Now, if I flip through the magazine, you can see that it's already looking really good, but we're gonna elevate this with some animation. We'll add a photo gallery and a video later on as well. First, I wanna take you through some of the basics. If you look in the right side menu here, there's a customize option where you can add a image to your background. You could stretch the background, which I already have, or you could just choose a color too. So if you wanted something like an aqua color, you could drag that over to fit the theme, make this a little bit more blue or aqua to go with the water theme. If I apply the settings here, you'll see that my background has changed. If I click on toolbar and navigation, you can see there's some navigation options and user interface options for colors, panel colors, icon colors. You also have the option to turn the page shadows off or on. You can see that they're on. I do like that, the drop shadow as well. Under link settings, you can change the color of the links and how that'll look in the publication. With a paid plan, you can choose your branding style and there's some advanced and text animation options as well. If I make my way back up to controls, you'll see some other user interface, user experience options. So enable printing, 
enable full screen, enable search, and you'll see that if I, for example, enable printing and then enable uh, something like disable URL and I apply the settings, you'll see that the printing option is here now as well. So that's how customize and controls work. I'm just going to change the color back to something lighter and then apply that back to a gray because I like that a little bit better. Next, we're going to add some text animation. So let's flip over to page two in the document. And basically, I want to animate the header deep dive and I want to fade in the story as well as the story byline. Now to do this, if you hover over a page, you'll see that there's an option here to select to animate. So go ahead and click that. And once I click that, the animate panel will be shown. And so the first set are text animations. We could do a pan left, pan right, fade, rotate in headers. So for example, if I do pan left, you'll see that all the text comes in from the left. And alternatively, if I do pan right, it comes in from the right. The one I really like and really fits the theme of this magazine is called Wave Text. So let's do that. And you can see that that kind of loops in and then the other text fades in. So our first animation, our first text animation has been set. To close this panel, just click the animation or animate button again. Next, I want to add a photo gallery to our publication. Now I want this image on the far right on page three to serve as the image where people can click on and launch a light box to show a photo gallery. Now for this, I'm going to show you how to use the edit button. Right now we're in design. If I click edit, that'll take us into a different workspace and you'll see that the magazine, the flipbook becomes a lot larger. So I'm just going to go over to page three in the document. You can see you can do that here with the editor navigation and then you can use these little controls to zoom out. And so again, I want to use this space to add a button or a photo gallery. On the right hand side, we have interactive elements. We can add links, hotspots, embed an image, a hotspot image. We'll do a video later on. But if you make your way down, the second last option is gallery. Go ahead and click that. That'll launch this window where you can choose your images. Let's click browse images. Now in the lesson files, there's a folder called Gallery Picks. It has four images of Fiji. They're labeled Fiji 1, Fiji 2, Fiji 3, and Fiji 4. Let's select all four of them and choose Open. You'll see that they'll load in the window here. And with them all selected, go ahead and click OK. Now you'll get a little prompt here that says, draw an area where you would like your image to appear. You can see that my cursor is now a crosshair cursor and I'll do my best because I've sized these the same size as this image on my page. I'll do my best to just kind of draw it out and this could be adjusted. So I'm just going to adjust that like so. I still want to see my border there so I'm just going to adjust it like that. And then if I click away, you can see that our photo gallery is set on the page. Now if I go back to design, You'll see that our animation will play out and if I hover over this image here, you can see that my cursor turns to a hand cursor so I can click that to load my light box and go through the images, the Fiji images that I've included here. And then I can close this and go back to the publication. Next, let's make our way to page four and add shape animations to these two circles that I have placed on the page. Now again, I'm just going to hover over this page and then click select to animate. That'll launch the animate panel. And remember, we added text animations to the first example. We'll do that again here, but we'll also add shapes and illustrations animation to these two circles. So why don't we add the text animation first? I want this to pan left. In other words, I want this to fly in from the left. So if I click pan left, all the text will pan in from the left side of the page. If I scroll down now, and I'm going to choose fill in from top because these elements are closer to the top of the page, it's going to recognize that they're in this position. So I'm gonna try that out, fill in top, and you'll see the fade will come in and then those two circles will animate 
at the same time. So that's pretty cool. We have a pan in from left and those two circles draw in to complete the animation. Let's add our video interaction next. You'll notice down below on the page, I left a call to action here that says watch video with an arrow pointing to this area. Now you have a couple options here. You can embed the actual video in this empty space and have it sit right on the page, or we can set up a button to open the video, much like we did with the photo gallery, to open in a light box experience. For this, we'll do the latter. So again, let's go to edit. And again, that will take us to the editor. And for this, we'll have to go to the last page or page four. So it's probably easier just to type four and then press return to go to page four. And then let's go ahead and adjust the view here, maybe a little bit more. So this is where we're gonna add that video down below. Again, on the right hand side, you have all your interaction, interactive elements, and let's choose video. Now you have two options here. You can embed from a service like YouTube, Vimeo, something with a URL. Obviously, YouTube would be the most common, or you can upload your own. For this, I've also included a URL in the lesson files that we can embed here. So I'm just going to paste my URL code right into that space. And the video is about sea turtles to go along with the theme of the page. Now have a look down here. We have some options on how we want this to play. So open video via hotspot. If I did nothing and clicked OK, we could draw out the video area in that empty space. But again, for this, I want the experience to be click a button, open a video. So I'm going to click that little check mark to choose that option to open video via hotspot. You also have the option to maximize the video player when it's clicked or autoplay the video when the page is shown. Once I have those settings in place, I'm gonna click OK. And much like we did with the photo gallery, you can see that my cursor now is a crosshair cursor. And I'll just draw out the size of the play button that I want. And I'm gonna place it right around the area where I have that call to action. Now, if I want this to be bigger, I'm just gonna click this little gear icon and I'm gonna make the width 100 and the height 100 as well. Make that 100 and this, good. So that's 100 pixels by 100 pixels and I'm gonna place it again around the area of my call to action. Something like that looks good. And now I can exit the editor and go back to design. And you'll see that the, the play button is here. The animation will play out. If I click the play button, it'll launch the video and I can play it to view it like so. Again, I've included that URL inside of the lesson files in the lesson folder. To publish the flipbook online, let's click on the publish button in the upper right hand corner. Here you have two options, cloud hosted, which will be hosted on a flow paper server or custom domain, which would be hosted on your own website. Let's choose cloud hosted. In the publish online window, let's simply click start upload. That'll take a few moments to upload to flow paper. And then we'll look at some other sharing options. Once it's been published, you can see that you have a custom URL that you can copy email and share with others. You can also embed it to a website. So you have a miniature version or the full publication. Next, let's have a look at how it appears in a web browser. Simply click view online and it'll launch in a web browser. I'll flip to the first spread and you can see that we have our animated text come in. If I click this image here, we have our photo gallery that we can go through. And then I can go to the second spread and we have our animated text as well as the animated shapes. And I can click the play icon to launch the video in a light box. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video on how to convert Adobe InDesign layouts into stunning animated flipbook content. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design using Adobe InDesign, then check out the playlist above. Until next time, take care and keep creating.